Hello, and welcome to War Talk, CTN's look at the political scene in Ann Arbor. I'm your host, Bonnie Gabowitz. We'll be discussing issues and solutions with the city council members from our five wards on the third Wednesday of each month. Joining us is Sumi Kailasapathy from Ward 1. Welcome, Sumi. Thank you, Bonnie. And Sumi, you've, uh, you've been interviewed by me several times over the past few years, uh, and you've been on the council for how long? Um, I have just completed my fifth year. So, um, because it's a two-term, it has been two-term council uh, seats. So you have one year left. One year left mm -hmm. before re-election, mm -hmm. that's right. So uh, you are bringing to us also a perspective of uh, all the things that have been happening and changing and progressing, as well as your individual interest in your own ward, which mm -hmm. is Ward 1, mm -hmm. as well as the, uh, the Human Rights Commission that's that right. in, you're involved in. Absolutely. So we do have a lot to talk about mm -hmm. today, Absolutely. especially being the end of the year of mm -hmm. 2017. Mm -hmm. So let's start with Ward 1. Okay. Um, is it What's happening? With what's ward happening? One? Uh, I guess the f thing that f comes to you one's foremost mind is, uh, the amount of development that is going on. I mean, literally a big project is, is approved. Is this mostly housing development? Mostly than housing. Initially, it was a lot of luxury housing, student housing. Um, we had um, the Broadway project approved, not in the last meeting, but the meeting before. The Glen project, it's a hotel and residential that was approved only last night. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of projects that are already uh, coming up on Pontiac Trail and on Nixon. So literally, development is the number one issue that people contact, residents of Ward 1 contact us about. I think the uh, big issue is we are trying to do catch up in Ward 1. We are approving these huge, humongous projects, some of them 300, 400, 500 new units at that time. Yeah. Are they mostly um, uh, properties to own rather than rent? Uh, it's, it's a mixture, oh, it's a mixed, it's mixed. A mixture mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. That we are playing catch up on um, infrastructure. So there's a lot of problems with like choke points and traffic and traffic jams. And the second issue that keeps coming up is parking. And uh, there's this new orthodoxy in the city that uh, if you don't have enough parking and the commute becomes a misery that people are somehow or other going to jump onto their bicycles or use transit. I'd, as, I'd like to see the bikes uh, in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So I mean it might change maybe 7 to 10 percent of the people. I'm not sure of that, about the statistics but the majority of the people are one of the reasons is uh, the climate mm -hmm. during winter time. Mm -hmm. People tend to like, uh, prefer the comfort of their automobile. So um, we really need to address this issue. Otherwise, it really impinges on the quality of life. When people feel that um, a commute that used to take them 12 minutes, 15 minutes, now takes 35 minutes because now, of is the traffic. Your, is your commute uh, your ward, the area where there was a, at least one roundabout that was put in? Absolutely, and yes. Is, are there any others being planned? Yes, uh, there are going to be a whole host of uh, uh, roundabouts going to be put on Nixon, mm -hmm. just so that people can get out of the egresses. Um, so the second issue is parking. Um, people are finding it really difficult to, sometimes it's not just their own vehicle, like uh, let's say, um, uh, a plumber comes to your house and he needs to park, there is no parking. Because a lot of commuters, some, some of them associated with either University of Michigan hospital system or University of Michigan, there is free parking in the neighborhood, right? So they tend to park their cars. So that adds to the, compounds to the problem. So when you approve projects with insufficient parking, it basically, the problem doesn't go away, it just spills into the neighborhoods and creates more. So is that something that will be continually addressed and worked out or? Uh, there is less support in city council to actually address this issue because there is still belief that 
we should not be catering to people's uh, needs of parking, because cars are evil and so we do not want to be catering to that. So, we, we just need to find a middle ground on that. So, uh, a lot of neighborhoods what they are doing is they are kind of closing it out by saying, okay, let us move into a parking district. So, you need to have a parking pass mm -hmm. if you want to park, park in our neighborhood. That is kind of the protective mechan mechanism that uh, some neighborhoods, uh, many of them are now following suit. Mm -hmm. So, I guess development seems to be the number one issue in Ward 1 right now and how to deal with it basically. Now, now uh, is, is there any development that is still long range that will take at least a year or two before it is completed? Yeah, I mean I think uh, the both the Glen project and the uh, Broadway project probably will take a couple of years and the Nixon is uh, longer horizon I think it takes like four or five. Mm -hmm. because it is done in phases. It is almost between the two about 800 units coming mm -hmm. online. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, but it sounds like your neighborhood in Ann Arbor has become a very popular place to move to uh, <laughs> yes. and uh, it certainly has, a, is a beautiful area of the mm -hmm. city as well. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the um, uh, Human Rights Commission, mm -hmm. that is also I know something you have been very involved mm -hmm. in and I want to make sure we have time to talk about that. Absolutely. Yeah, but, uh, the city hired an independent uh, police auditor, Hillard Hines, and they did an um, audit of the police department policing and interviewing uh, concerned residents regarding this and they had their report out uh, last month. Uh, there was a work session. Uh, lots of residents turned up to speak about the report and uh, many of them had um, um, serious concerns about the um, report and I, I share many of their concerns mm -hmm. as well. Uh, the initial request for an independent audit was based on not whether we wanted a police oversight civilian board or not. The request from the Human Rights Commission is we wanted one. So, we wanted an independent auditor to figure out what kind of an indi um, police oversight board would best suit mm -hmm. Ann Arbor's needs. And this by the way was going on for quite a while. Yeah, it was a long a, range it, project. Yeah, it started like uh, the uh, audit itself is uh, less than a year, but uh, the whole request, uh, Human Rights Commission worked on it for almost a year to come up with their report wanting it. So, right now we have an independent audit uh, report and they have something called community co-policing. Um, it, it is very short on oversight mm -hmm. accountability. Even under their um, framework, it is basically if you have some problems with the police or you feel that their investigation what was not independent or was partial. You want an impartial um, review of the events, they still know body because they feel like you still need to go to the uh, police chief or the police department so, for so their internal review. Right. It was all internal. It is still um, internal. Yeah, so, yeah. that is why we need to make sure that what we set up, because you um, minority communities or people who feel that they are targeted, in order for them to have trust in the police force, you need to have an independent body. When they have issues or problems, they should be able to go and say, okay, I am not satisfied with the answer. We want an independent set of people, mm -hmm. regular residents to look at it. Because I mean, we, it's basically all about checks and balances, isn't it? In a democracy, you need to yeah. have checks and balances. And, and that's your theme song. I know on several shows, you've used that expression, yeah. checks and balances. Yeah. So, I know it's important to you. I, I believe how you prop up democracy is making sure the institutions are working well. And how do you make sure institutions are working well? is by instituting checks and balances, right? We do not believe a king or a good person is going to save a community. 
in democracy we believe checks and balances. So, uh, so it's a big issue if mm -hmm. we can only have police review their own behavior or their problems and there is no independent body. So that's what Human Rights Commission is right, trying to work it out now. Mm -hmm. How to set this up so that if there are issues, and by the way, I just want to make sure that what the Human Rights Commission is requesting is not disciplinary powers over the police. They are not asking they have powers to fire a policeman, absolutely not. What they are asking is that there is an independent body, if there are issues or problems with the current uh, investigation, residents have another way mm -hmm. to go. There's an, there's an avenue to communicate concerns and have something looked at. Looked at right. by another set of independent right. people mm -hmm. who have nothing to do with the police force. So that was the whole point of getting there. So a lot of residents felt quite disappointed with the Hillard Hines report, which was basically trying to have a civilian body, which was kind of a liaison between the police and the uh, community. If the police have the community has some problems, they can come and let them know. But there's no investigative power. So if there is an issue at a bus station, and if only the police can look at those tapes, uh, there's an issue. Because then they might say, no, we have a different opinion about what happened at the police uh, bus station. So then an independent body could be reviewing the tapes to figure out, OK, what happened? So um, that is going yeah. to be the next stage after this independent review, to set up a review body which can actually have independent powers to look at any issues that we might have. I have a, 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 at least one more question about the, the Human Rights Commission, what they're doing. Maybe after the break, we can continue this discussion sure. and uh, get a little bit more information okay. about your involvement. OK. Great. We want to hear from you. So please email questions so to ctn at a2gov.org or tweet us at hashtag CTN in Arbor. We're taking a break now, and we'll be coming back with more from Ward 1. Hi, I'm Bonnie Gabowitz, and this is Ward Talk. I'm talking to Sumi Kalasapathy on, uh, from Ward 1. And we were just talking about the Human Rights Commission that you've been so involved in. Uh, in terms of, uh, we were talking about the uh, clarifying what your commission does, and it's, it's not in any way 
telling the police, you know, how to deal with the police. It's really creating an avenue of communication for citizens to have a place to go if they have concerns. Yeah. Uh, so uh, in terms of setting that up, is, is that something you're in the process, the police department is in the process no. of doing? Police department cannot do it because this is about oversight of the police so department, it's the commission right? That's it's a commission involved. has to okay. work with the city staff. Okay. We need to have an ordinance change in order to set up a advisory board or an oversight board mm -hmm. which has powers to investigate and whatever they find out, they will give that information to the police chief and it's up to them to then figure out how they so deal with it. So there are still several steps that steps, have to be absolutely. taken yeah. before Peop something is in place. Yes, ordinance change and a body is created, people are appointed and uh, then they have, so okay. yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's not going to be done in a couple of months. So the, the best days. way is for citizens to see what what happens at the meetings? Absolutely. If yeah. they're involved, the best place to be at are the Human Rights Commission meetings. Mm -hmm. um, and they need Is to that once a month or twice a month? Once a month, a month mm -hmm. on Wednesdays usually, uh, between um, 7 and 9 in the evenings, the basement of the city hall is where we have it. Uh, yeah, I mean, we always looking for people who are involved because this is a citizens led effort mm -hmm. and we really do want citizens to be part of this process. Good. Okay. And also people can go online if they yes. don't watch it they can go online and uh, watch, watch it, it on demand. Absolutely. Um, and this being December there is a plan to continue the Deer Cull program uh, uh, instead of going into detail exactly what's going on I just wanted to summarize what the changes are from last year yes. since um, there seems to be um, more education going on. People are more aware of what's happening, why it's happening. Yeah. So what is the difference this year? What is the difference is basically um, there we moved funding from next year's to this year so that we have doubled the funding this year. And there's going to be the number of uh, deer cull is going to be 250 this year, primarily in ward ones and two, which is an the, increase. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I think uh, it was about 100 last year. It's going to be 250. The reason is, instead of doing 100 every year indefinitely, if you get ahead of the growth curve and if you do 250 cull, then it's going to be just maintenance mode of. Um, doing culls or sterilization because we will have the deer population under control. Again, I just want to make sure, I know there are citizens who have been upset about this whole process. It's not to decimate all the deer, it's not, but per capita we do have large number of deers and that is due to um, not having a predator. They don't have predators. and um, uh, and. Uh, and usually it's simplified that people's pretty gardens are being um, ruined. That's why rich folk want us to do this. And um, I, I can tell you my, my primary reason for voting this is when I started seeing studies which showed that if deer browse rates are high, about 15 percent, forest regeneration is really hampered. And we pride ourselves, right? Ann Arbor is about trees and parks and natural areas. And if we ignore this issue, it's, it's going to really hamper forest regeneration. So it, the thinking is if you increase, uh, if you decrease the population more this year, then we, we won't be playing catch up with the Every next year, year that exactly. you, you actually might have less population, therefore less to have to uh, cull and absolutely. sterilize. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Nobody has joy in killing anything. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's almost like a necessary evil that is being done. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is one way of getting the population under control so that after that we can just be on a maintenance. And is the period of time that they're doing the call any different? Are they doing uh, I think it's much shorter this time during the school holiday period and it has been advertised well enough which parks and natural areas are being closed and uh, yeah they're trying to do it within a 
because that was one of the complaints uh, in the first deer call that it was closed for a longer period of time, people did not know about it. I think staff are doing an excellent job in terms of informing residents and educating them regarding right. when it is going to be done. And, and this so information much. can uh, be found online on the a2.gov. Yeah. Uh, data at the base um, in terms of checking whether someone's neighborhood is mm -hmm. going to have uh, any closings or whatnot. Correct. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, I know there has been some progress in the Greenway. Yeah. If you could tell us what the progress is. Yeah, <laughs> it's now, it used to be called the Allen Creek Greenway, now it's called the Tree Line. Uh, it was actually adopted at City Council uh, last night, which is uh, 18th, because I'm not sure when this is going to be telecast, uh, 18th meeting. We, um, I know people have worked for decades on this project, and finally uh, we funded it uh, the last couple of years, so the whole master project has been approved, and uh, it was unanimously adapted by the uh, city, uh, city council, so it becomes one mm -hmm. of our uh, documents, uh, master plan documents, and now it is a matter of finding funding and uh, making it a reality. It is so, in books and so plans right now. Would yeah. the funding be possibly state or, or federal funding? I think it is going to be private? all the above. We have to probably apply for funding. Mm -hmm. I think they are looking at even like donors, private donors private. Uh, donating it, just like people you donate money to the sports program at the university or university. I think this would be a great way to donate to the city that we love so much. So it is going to be all the above. I think we will be applying for funding at federal, state and uh, local matching funds and uh, private donors too. So I, 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 so it is going to be another huge project. It is not going to be done in a year or two, maybe a couple of decades. But it must to be complete. satisfying for you to finally see it. Uh, coming to this point Absolutely. after so Absolutely. More than me, I think all those people who have worked on this project for decades, mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm really happy that they were able to see a fruition, at least in terms of plans. Right. Now right. getting it. <laughs> it's, called, it's called having patience. You really do when, when you have such a big project. Such like a big this. project, exactly. Yeah. And I know there's been, uh, the city has uh, tried very hard to uh, have improved communications about pedestrian safety to try to change people's behavior, whether they are walking, riding a bicycle, driving a car. Uh, I see new uh, bicycle lanes that mm -hmm. have been put in place. Um, so where are we now with that whole yeah, program? Um, um, Aid to Safe Transit is a mother's group, which I think has taken on the center stage right now. They routinely come and tell city where problem areas right. they are. They started with the school zone. Absolutely. Right. Even now, they come up with very, and they have creative solutions too. I mean, don't put the crossing here. Can you change it? Because these are mothers who care. It's their children that they are talking about. They, they so see the pra practical application of, absolutely. of where the markers are. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the city has been following their advice. And uh, of course, we have city engineers trying transportation engineers, but they have been uh, showing us where the problem points are. And I think city has had a concerted effort right now to, you might see in a lot of crossings, there are markings now, and uh, um, there is also a move to put lighting, because th there are still crosswalks. There are, in the nights, it is very dangerous, because yes. there is you know I what I am talking about. I know, because it gets dark so early, and those flashing lights are very helpful. But not all of them have flashing lights, mm -hmm. so then unlit crosswalks need to be lit. So we, again, there is a lot more to go forward with. And um, you might have heard the mental health millage passed, and part of the money is going to be rebated back to the city. And um, I believe, uh, uh, um, I think it's 20 percent of it is going to be going for pedestrian safety. Will that be starting in January? No, no, I don't think it's going to be collected in January. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the next the next tax. year. Yeah. 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 So we will the rebate money would be a continuous source of uh, revenue for the city mm -hmm. to make these pedestrian improvements, which is very important because that's 
when people feel it's safe to walk and cross and bike, more people will, at least during summertime, mm -hmm. a lot more people would mm -hmm. venture out to get out of their cars and mm -hmm. do this, right? Yeah. So, and uh, with just the few minutes left that mm -hmm. we have, uh, you, you know, after a full year in 2017, uh, what are you looking forward to in, uh, in the next year in terms of uh, how things are coming along? Do you have any, uh, any concerns or any feelings of satisfaction mm -hmm. uh, of what has finally yeah, come I'm, I, about? My, my concerns are somehow that we feel like we can grow ourselves out of this fiscal, tight fiscal um, situation we are in because our expenses are growing faster than our revenues and some or other if we put more and more development in those additional tax dollars is some or other going to save us. Um, this is a partial view of the situation because the more residents and homes that you put in they also cost money, right? Because right. they need, need to more put services. Absolutely. Not, not only services, infrastructure, just look at the Duba run around about that, I think almost cost $2 million. So it's not like a panacea. You just keep stacking these high rises mm -hmm. because they bring in there. And then it impinges on the quality of life. So it's not all about maximizing tax. So for me, that's the concern. And that's where are we going to strike that balance, balance. with? Mm -hmm. So that's one of the issues that we have to struggle as a council to come to make sure that uh, in the process of maximizing revenue, we are not just totally destroying this uh, city and uh, making it unlivable. <laughs> well, I'd like to thank you for joining us. and. Uh, I look forward to seeing what 2018 has to offer us. And thank you for your service. Thank you, Bonnie. And I'll see you again. Thank you so much. Remember to join us for a new episode every third Wednesday of the month. We'd like to hear from you, so please email us at ctn at a2gov.org, attention, Ward Talk. You can also follow CTN and ask questions on Twitter at twitter.com slash ctn in arbor. We'll make sure to include your questions. For Ward Talk, I'm Bonnie Gabowitz. Until next month. Thank you so much. Thank you.